Good evening, and welcome to the start of another wonderful week of the You Talk Show, where we talk about the big things in society. As part of our ongoing commitment to education and civics, we're now doing Justice Week. We sort of hinted at this last week with uh, the judiciary's influence on the way government works, but we're going to really dig in to how the average person experiences justice. But before we can do that, we have to answer a rather more philosophical question. What exactly is justice? Is it the satisfying slap of the gavel against the bench as there is a call for order in the courtroom? Is it just the law and order noise playing on loop in your head? Is it an organized crime boss being taken out in shackles? Or is it the feeling that you get in your heart when a restaurant owner claps back at a reviewer who is obviously a dickhead. Kyle, what do you think justice is? I mean, that's those all seem very, uh, I guess, practical in a sense. And I do stress in a sense. I was thinking of about course. it. I was thinking about it uh, almost in a very philosophical light but also still kind of in a practical way. Justice, I mean, what does justice mean and on, on what level are we talking about? You know, are we talking about on a societal level or a personal level? What does personal justice look like? What I don't think the two can be separated. Like? Well, perhaps, perhaps. We'll figure that out. But... When I, when I think about justice, I think of volition. I think of the ability to decide your own course in life. I think that if anything represents justice, it's the ability to decide your own actions free of any outside influences or free of the need to consider outside influences almost like a like a force of will persisting. But what does that look like in practical terms? In my well, mind... It... I guess the big questions about justice are when that volition collides with the right to autonomy of others. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, an interesting point. I, I thought you were going to keep going on. You haven't frozen there, have you? Hello? Uh, yep, you're oh, just yep, gently you're sliding frozen. down the screen. Yep, yep, I just realised it's happening. <laughs> I thought I fixed that. It's happening again. Yep. It's okay, uh, you froze and you were just looking very thoughtful. Yeah, I was looking thoughtful. I think you froze as well. We both froze there. Because you, you were looking thoughtful and I thought you were going to say more. <laughs> <laughs> and you were thinking, oh, he's looking thoughtful. But, uh, yeah. Are you frozen again? You are frozen again. What is happening? Am I back? Okay. Hi. What What happened there? Uh, I think my hotspot just decided to turn off for no reason. I don't. That know explains why. a lot. So we're gonna it need, does, it we're gonna need to splice together from the previous. That's all right. It's just more. Editing we're gonna need to me. splice together Thanks, from the previous. Wi-Fi hotspot. So <laughs> Thanks, how Obama. Much of that was caught. <laughs> it's the Greens' fault. It's the <laughs> Greens' fault that the hotspot turned off. Uh, okay. The, here's the thing, though. <sighs> The Greens are actually at fault for a bunch of stuff. I mean, you want to talk about justice but not or that. injustice. You know, freaking the Green the Greens blocking the housing bill is, is one form of injustice in my mind. But then again, this this episode isn't about the Greens. This is this is what is justice. In my mind, justice is the ability to, to understand the consequences of your actions and make that choice yourself. That is that is justice in my mind. It is volition incarnate. 
I don't think we fully have that in society. I guess. I guess that's justice before the fact. Um, before the fact. When we. Well, yeah, yeah, right. So you, you said earlier about like societal justice versus personal justice. Let me mm. let me look at an example. Um, it is it is three hundred years ago, and I am a simple farmer with a flock of sheep, and I don't know one of those n- nice wooden sticks to herd the sheep around. Um, and let's say that two of my sheep are stolen in the night. Um, obviously, this is unjust. Um, it may be just if I have sheep, others have none, and I I am watching people starve, but that's a little more complex than we're going for here. Um, if I find who did it, if I find who did it and my sheep get ba- uh, brought back to me... Um, then personal justice is served, um, but but further the societal justice is advanced because we have an example of, of a theft not working out, and the next person who thinks that they might like to uh, steal someone's sheep may have to consider that uh, nobody liked that last time. Hmm. I mean, interesting, but I think I'm I'm getting at a sort of a different point. Hmm. A uh, a point of so, so when I when I refer to societal justice, I mean justice within the system of society, and whether or not that system of society allows for individual or collective justice. Now you're kind of describing a collective justice there, but both thinking... individual and collective. Yeah. That's the thing. I think that there are many cases where they are one and the same. True. True. I mean, I think you're right there. Although part of it... Part of it just seems... So, okay, when I think about justice, or rather when I think about injustice, I think about uh, such concepts as uh, wage slavery. The idea that, yeah, there are employed but they're only making enough to maybe just feed themselves and keep the lights on you know they have a job but that job barely pays them enough to live i mean effectively that's in my mind that's that's slavery just without the that just in everything but name right and i see yeah so i'm thinking and then there's also you know, do you have the ability to affect change? Can you, you know, can one person affect change through sheer force of will? I Not through sheer force possible. of will, but with a combination of force of will and understanding bureaucracy, I think a person can affect change. I think we, we have that, but at the same time, I don't, I think it's not exactly easy. You have to take a lot of time out, a lot of sacrifice. You know, right, so it's not just volition that you're concerned with here, but it's also agency. Yes, yeah, that's that's it. That's the that's the word I'm looking for. Essentially, ju- justice in my mind is a is a a combination of agency, volition, and in a sense, consequences. And so, natural consequences, what you'd say, yeah. Yeah, you know, you do something, you have the consequences of that action, but you're still free to take that action if you so choose. You know, I guess in a way, you know, the the freedom to make your own mistakes. Mm. Does that make sense? Am I getting See, I know, I know here? it does. It does. No, look, look, the last two times we tried to record this, and this time as well, I will be, I will be referring back to France. Francis Hutchison, Scottish philosopher, who thinks that we have a tiny voice in our heads that tells us what's right. Um, <clears throat> like, I, I think that justice is fundamentally the processes by which society spends more time doing what is right than doing what is not right. Um, I think that's multifaceted. I think justice is a self-reinforcing system, or in an ideal world, it should be. Um, 
Like this idea of moral sense, I like it a lot. The idea that if humans are left unsupervised, shall we say, and no matter the cultural background, um, we will basically try and do the things that um, that work for the public good, um, as long as they don't inconvenience us too much. Mm. Like, that is an idea that was put into words in the 1700s, and it's still a little Actually, bit of a weird one in sociology because we look at other cultures where capitalism in the way we have it isn't the norm. And we do see that people do still have a very strong sense of community and the communal good. Sort of. I mean, I'd argue about community, at least in, you know, within certain parts of Australia, particularly within, you know, Parramatta and wider Sydney. Um, you know, I grew up in Parramatta. The sense of community has just died. Oh, I promise you, Parramatta has a away. sense of community. Like Parramatta has a sense of community. It's just that if you're if you're not within a very specific in group, you're not part of that community, and you never will be. Yeah. See, I mean, I'm referring to like more geographic community, but you know, that's that's kind of another Look, thing. As, as someone as someone who got knocked unconscious at a high school in North Parramatta, um, let me tell you, there's a community there. I was not inside it, but there was a community. Okay. Um, there was something I was just going to bring up um, when you said something earlier. Uh, what was it? Can you say what you said about two minutes ago? Um, that we act in the interests of the communal good as long as it doesn't inconvenience us too much. That's Yeah, that's the one. Um, okay, hmm. so there's also another thing. A question I, I sort of have, and I hope this isn't too much of a deviation, but I've thought about it, the idea of struggle. Because struggle can be a very potent tool in in one's formative years. In you know Hitler thought so too. <laughs> are you being serious or are you just messing with me? I'm absolutely being serious. Have you ever looked into what Mein Kampf translates to as a title? My struggle. It's actually. literally I, I, my I struggle. I was told about that. Yeah. Jesus. <sighs> well, I guess I'm becoming like him. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, no, he was much too identitarian. That's okay. I'll make sure that if you go too far off the moral pathway, that um, you have the cyanide pill available to you. No worries, no worries. Sounds great. Um, but yeah, the, the okay, so the idea, I had this question of like, should we, because modern society kind of wants to take away struggle. But I think I feel like that no, might be an doesn't. injustice. Well, not all of modern society, I don't but think there's that's a section a of people assessment. that does. I... They want to take away, like, no, you, no, no. You I think... the idea of first helicopter parents and now like bulldozer parents that just clear the whole pathway for their child. And the child has no struggle. I'm, I'm familiar with those, but in both cases, these are perjur they're pejorative. We accept that these parents are doing the wrong thing for their children and for society. Um, Do we though? Because it seems like the people who, are, I guess, the most prominent voices for societal change, are leaning in that direction. They are pushing for the same thing that those parents want. You know? No. It's... No. Um, I, 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 you disagree? No, I, I disagree strongly, but I, I, I agree with you that struggle is important. Um, mm. <laughs> and through a certain cynical lens, I would argue that the education system is designed to be a struggle partially for this reason, because without overcoming adversity, without, without personally seeing that a thing is difficult and succeeding at it anyway, uh, developmentally speaking, you never learn. You never, you never learn that you can take on challenges. Yeah, you, you, actually, here's you, a thing. Here's a thing. You hear the printer making a new beep code that you don't recognize, and you just go, "Well, guess I'll die." <laughs> I mean, that's a here's a sort of a different example because it reminds me of um, so, so when I was homeschooled, um, 
let's just say, like my mother taught us, and let's just say she wasn't exactly the most patient person. She uh, ended up scribing for me because I was a very slow writer, exceedingly slow, and I also found writing to be fairly tedious. Um, so I didn't like it. I was very slow at it. Thing is, then it came to like writing essays, and I legit just didn't think I could do it because I hadn't, of my own volition, overcome that struggle. But then a, a brilliant teacher and uh, and sort of friend of of this channel, um, Ken Enderby, who's been on the show before, he basically sat me down and he said, look, I think you can write an essay. I think you absolutely can write. And I'd like you to give it a try. I don't know why I went along with it, even though I thought that I, I couldn't, but somehow I just trusted in his wisdom. You know, he, and so I ended up, you know, trying to write and lo and behold, you know, nowadays I, I'm, I'm writing a novel. I've, I'm, you know, writing the script for a documentary. You know, I, I very well can write even, even like pencil to paper as tedious as I, as I find it, I can do that. I think that and actually tells us success. what justice yeah. is in a very specific way. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, we went we went before the process by which society chooses to do the right thing instead of the wrong thing. All right, I went with that one. Um, you have this idea of volition and agency. Hmm. I guess that somewhere between the two, we must say that um, a system of justice, any system of justice, must be where uh, the individual is allowed to develop and learn and grow in a healthy way every individual and that's why murder is wrong because that individual that individual who's now a corpse deserved to learn and grow hmm. i think you're right um i mean we're just under yay we, we did it <laughs> we saved the orphanage <laughs> all right i guess we'll end it there um thank you for watching this ended up being a lot better than I thought it would be. Um, and Third time's yeah. the charm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll catch you later.